Today we are going to be taking a look at the Geometric Future Squama 2503B and the XPG Hurricane 120 ARGB. Both are RGB fans. How do they perform? Let's get right into the data. And welcome to Computer Tech and More. Let's get into it. On to the data. So first some basic background information about the fans. So on the left side, we have the Squama fan. On the right side, we have the XPG Hurricane. So the single pack, the multi-packs, um, and the basic kind of spec information. So I ended up getting the Squama in a triple pack. Uh, black, material is PBT, 2000 RPM, 69.11 uh, CFM at 2.92 uh, millimeters of H2O, 29 decibels, voltage, amperage, uh, ARGB ratings, uh, 3 pin, 4 pin, some other information. Looking at the hurricane, fluid dynamic bearing, uh, the bearing was not listed on the squama, RPM range 600 to 2000, max airflow 61.5, so fairly similar CFMs. Max static pressure is 1.42, so its rating is a lot less on the Hurricane. Uh, max noise level, uh, fan protection, mean time between failures, and warranty information. First up in the graphs is my airflow test in my case simulation. In the simulation, we're looking at four different data points. A 6-inch, which represents a small form factor um, case. A 9-inch, which represents a small, more standard-like uh, computer case, 11 inch, which represents a standard kind of mid tower like uh, um, Corsair 550D or the uh, mid tower for the Frac Design Meshify series, and at 14.5 represents a case like the Torrent, uh, Frac Design Torrent. And when looking at these fans, uh, the best fan in the world, best fan in like a ideal circumstance would be a perfectly flat line, meaning the fan would lose no air velocity over that distance. So it would create a perfect funnel down the, down the case and it would have no air dissipation, loss in velocity at all. But <clears throat> we don't live in that kind of fantasy uh, world. So what we're looking for is as flat a line as possible, which indicates that the air is not spreading out very much, so it is creating a funnel as well as it can while pushing air out of its way and for the line to be as linear as possible so that means that it uh, isn't doing some sort of parabolic curve down uh, where it's dramatically losing performance uh, steeply at some point so a very steep curve indicates that the air is just kind of spewing in every direction immediately after the fan so First up, when taking a look at this data, we're seeing the Hurricane 120 ARGB fan, and it appears to have a fairly steep drop-off, but we aren't really looking at any other fans other than itself at this. At some key data points at 20, 40, 60, 80, and 100 uh, PWM signal, uh, RPMs listed at the bottom, the uh, horizontal axis is distance, vertical is air speed. Let's jump to the SWAMA. The Squama uh, 2503 appears to perform quite a bit better. That being said, the Squama has some very kind of interesting behavior that isn't really completely visible with my trend lines. So the first data point at the, this is 100% PWM is there, second one is there, so it should be a curve there and then has a steep drop off before kind of leveling out at the end. This is kind of weird behavior. I don't see very many fans that have that sort of uh, steep drop off and then they level out again. They'll normally drop off all the way to the bottom. So it kind of seems like it spreads out, fills in as much area as it's going to, and that's just kind of what what's lever is left of the airspeed. And you'll kind of see quasi similar behavior at all the different RPMs, which is good because it means it's consistent. So Consistent data is, is is good, basically. So let's jump to the next graph, which is the fan 
uh, performance at noise normalized values, in that case, simulation test. So the dark blue line right here represents my control fan, which is a mix between the 120 Noctua A12X25 and the Noctua A14. And they are noise normalized together and kind of averaged in a way where uh, it's like four fifths, three fifths, four fifths, uh, the Noctua A12X25 and the remainder is going for the A14 in that average calculation to create this sort of composite fan. But a fan that follows its trend represents a very good fan in all these graphs. Fans that fall underneath it aren't necessarily bad, but they're not as good. Fans that outperform it should be considered very good fans. So that disclaimer out of the way, how do these fans shape up? Well, the Hurricane is in orange. It starts off at better performance than my control and then just kind of drops away. Mind, it's not terrible, but it is lower performance. As for the Squama, well, it never really catches up and it drop off pretty steeply at the end. So looking at it, unless you're looking at these fans for a small form factor case, so that six inch mark, I would not really recommend it, but let's see how things look at 100% PWM. Well, at 100% PWM, they're very much the same. The control fan is just outperforming it, and the Squama in particular just is not very good performance overall, unless you're looking at a small, basically the 9-inch and the 6-inch small cases. Once you're looking at a bigger case, you should be looking somewhere else. Moving on to my CPU air cooler testing. On the left side, we have RPM versus airspeed uh, through that air cooler, and this is a blade efficiency test. So how good is the fan design at moving air, basically? So if you watch like the fan showdown, like I do, uh, and are interested in making uh, fan designs, this would be good data for you. If you're looking at trying to make the quietest fan possible, well, then you want the graph on the right side. The right side is noise versus airspeed. So this is a noise efficiency graph for how much air the fan is pushing. So let's jump back to the RPM one. So reading the key colors because it may be a little bit challenging to see. The Hurricane is this dark blue. It is performing under my control fan, which is the light blue, while the Squama is performing slightly better than the control fan. This indicates that that Squama is good in pressure type applications. So again, reiterating my point of it may be a good choice for a small form factor case or for your CPU cooler, both either a radiator or for uh, an air cooler if you like it styling. Of course, all that dependent. And as for noise performance, well, it's pretty much a jumbled mess. They're all very close. We, I think we see a technical win as we reach the higher air speeds for the Squama and the Hurricane, but I'm gonna call them effectively similar. So um, now let's just say there, let's jump to the next graph. Moving on to the next one. This is uh, on the left side, RPM versus CFM. So again, that blade efficiency. On the right side, we have noise versus CFM. So noise efficiency. So the reason I look at through an air cooler, through the case, and then just raw CFM is because they all look at slightly different things and just looking at one or two of them doesn't give you a complete picture of the fan. So like the case simulation, demonstrates how much air dissipates from the fan. So does it create a nice focused airflow or does it spread it out everywhere? Going to the CPU cooler, does it handle a pressure application well or not? Uh, I would like to add a radiator to my testing, uh, but that is not in my uh, picture yet. I need more, more support. So please watch my videos and subscribe. Uh, but anyways, the CFM testing then is kind of the absolute raw performance because all the air is being focused down the tube. So they all should be, they're not going to be the same, but it's um, more scientific, I think would be a good way to say it. 
But anyways, onto these graphs. The light blue line is again the control, the dark blue line is the hurricane. It is being outperformed by the squama and the control. The control is functionally a little bit better than the squama, but it's very close to it, which indicates a very good fan. As for noise performance, I'm going to say they're functionally equivalent with the squama coming out with a technical win, but it's not very meaningful. And I might as well note at this time my margin of error. So my anemometer, so that's the wind speed gauge, has a measurement accuracy of plus or minus 0.1 meters per second. So that means a fan that is uh, 0.1 meters per second higher in performance or a fan that's 0.1 meters per second lower in performance, you can just consider all those fans to be functionally equivalent. But I take the test a couple times and so there's a trend towards better performance, which is why they have the rankings they do, but you should consider them to be very, very, very similar. As for noise, my microphone is plus or minus three, three and a half decibels. So fans that are within a three and a half plus or minus range should be considered to be functionally equivalent. It's just the level of accuracy I'm able to produce, produce right now. Squama 2503B. XPG Hurricane 120. Or at least a uh, picked out selection of them that I felt made a good criteria listing for for this sort of fan. So some high-end performers with some low-end performers just to show how these fans sort of stack up. So right away the Hurricane is a rather high-end performing fan. Um, another note with this graph I have wattages listed at the bottom so 130 watts, 145, 55, 75, 90, 210. I made a full video on the maximum cooling potential of my CPU air cooler and through that testing I was able to derive uh, what air speeds associate with what wattage my CPU uh, could run at. So this is applicable to only my CPU, which is the 11700K. And if you have that same CPU, yours may behave slightly differently. So it's applicable to my CPU and to my specific air cooler. So if you have the same CPU as me and the same cooler as me, you could probably use this data almost verbatim directly, but assuming you don't, well, what does it mean? Well, if let's say your CPU cooler comes with the XF120 from um, ROG, well, it's only able to produce at this noise normalized value of 40 decibels. So that's 40 decibels at my readings, which is equivalent to the Noctua A12X25 running at approximately 1,100 RPM, which I found to be darn tootin' near silent. So pretty much no noise, which is why I chose that, that value. So looking at the noise normalized value, so again, back to the X at 120, let's say you had that, that would allow you a cooling potential of 130 watts approximately. Well, if you upgrade to the Hurricane, and it can move 1.2 meters per second at that same noise level, go down to the bottom, well, you're looking at probably around 180 to 185 watts of cooling on my cooler or an increased performance in your CPU cooler of choice. So that's how you would use this data. And um, so basically just moving up from whatever you have on this graph to a higher end one, just to either let you run the fan slower to hit the same performance mark or keeping it at the same level to have lower temperatures, uh, or at the same level to have higher performance, being able to have it have a higher wattage, basically running through it in an unlocked CPU. I'm rambling. Anyways, so the Hurricane produced 1.2 meters per second air flow at 
1,386 RPM. The Squama produced uh, 0.8 meters per second of airflow at 1,045 RPM. So that puts the Squama kind of towards the bottom of the graph. It's not a terrible result, but it is below the Noctua A12X25, which produced 1.2. The Hurricane being functionally better, but within the same range, so they would be functionally equivalent, even though they're very similar in value. But both of them are below the top end fans, which are like the Silent Wings 4 Pro 1, 120, the Tough Fan 12, and the Wonder Snail. Moving on to 100% PWM through that same air cooler, how do these fans stack up? Well, right here at the bottom, we have the Hurricane, and it's running at its 2000 RPM mark, producing 46.2 decibels. So first, that is an excellent decibel reading, especially considering its RPM. If you look at the A12X25, it has, and it's 100 RPM faster, but it's producing a bit more noise. So you could consider them to be very similar decibel readings for RPMs, but its air speed is only 0.7 meters per second. So it's quite a lot lower on that performance metric. Uh, so its maximum cooling on my CPU cooler would be just over 210 watts, making the Arctic P12 substantially better performance, but it's also quite a bit noisier. As we move up, we've got the Noctua, the Silent, or the SL Infinity from Lee and Lee. And then right here is the Squama uh, 2503, uh, spinning at 2,050 RPM. So they have very similar RPMs. The Squama is a little bit noisier at 48.9 decibels, but that is still an excellent result. Very similar, I would say, to the Noctua, and they're producing the same airspeed. So that dimpling effect on this fan might actually actually be doing something to give it some, well, I, I don't know if I would say excellent, but very good performance. Because as we move up the graph, we see that the Wonder Snail outperforms it for very similar decibel readings, again, within my margin of error, but its uh, maximum performance is outside my margin. So the Wonder Snail is a better cooler for your CPU when running at 100% PWM. The Soundwing 4 Pro is again, higher performance, but its jump in noise is quite a bit higher outside my margin of error. Taking a look at the top runners on this graph, we have stuff like the T30, the Nocto F12, and the NFA14. And all those are, were pushing air at 3.2 meters per second by my anemometer readings through my CPU cooler. And they're all noisy. The T3 is the best of the bunch at 60 decibels, but it's not the focus of this video. But you see how things stack up, and it depends on what noise level you want, what CPU you have, and how much cooling potential you actually need. Taking a look at the data from a different perspective, because I think that that's important, is uh, cooler airspeed vertical versus decibels horizontal. So better fans are going to be top left and worse fans are going to be bottom right so we're looking for them to be over in this direction the squama is sitting right here this green line so it's doing pretty well it's towards the top of the graphs not at the very top but it's towards the top and so it's it's doing a really good job in its performance metric and you can see it's running with some other big names like this one is the t30 uh, this one right here is the Noctua A12X25, and the Hurricane is this yellow line. So it's following the Squama pretty darn closely until it reaches the top of its performance, and then it just kind of, it just stops. But it never was a terrible fan. Uh, the Noctua P12 is right here, sort of middle-ish. The dark green one is the Arctic P12. So it represents kind of one of my more worst fans. And the other bad fan in here is the Noctua F12, the IPC one running at 3000 RPM, it's that. All right, moving on. So this is noise normalized distance from the fan 
um, in my case simulation test. There was a lot of fans on this, so we're going to try to work our way through it, and I'm going to point out sort of uh, the key pieces on it. The squama is this brown line, and you can see that it starts off as one of the top fans and then quickly drops to being one of the worst, which is why I say I would not buy this as a case fan, period, end of story, unless you're looking at only a small form factor. Taking a look at the hurricane, it is this purple line. It again starts off towards the top and then drops into the middle and then drops to the top of the bottom. So it's the best of the worst. That is not a great position to be in. If you're looking for a case fan, I recommend taking a look at this yellow line, which is the Silent Wings 4 Pro 140. Uh, maybe this one, the Tough Fan 12. The gray line is the Wonder Snail. That one performed excellently. And the orange one here is the Noctua A12X25. Some bottom, other bottom, or even worse fans would be something like the P. NFP12 and the Noctua NF S12 series. Moving the, the graphs up to 100% PWM signal, how do things shake up? Well, not much better. Uh, I would still say I do not recommend these fans, the yellow line, four case fans, it just has huge drop in performance, same as the Hurricane. So let's move on. Uh, taking a closer look at that essentially data uh, in that case simulation, so looking at it noise normalized at the 9 inch mark. I'm sorry, my data seems to have gotten uh, disorganized a little bit. So 1.1, 1.1 meters per second, so that puts them at approximately the same performance level as the Noctua A12X15, which is spinning quite a bit slower. But um, they have the same noise level, so take that for what you will. But that puts them at basically the middle of the graphs. Not good, not bad, middle. And they're substantially away from my control. Uh, jumping up to 100% PWM doesn't really move anything for these fans. So this closer look, we're gonna just move on. They're not performing that well overall. Uh, then we're taking a look at the 6-inch mark, so this is airspeed versus decibels, again in my case simulation. So decibels at the bottom, airspeed going vertical, and where do these fans shake up? Well, the pink line in this one is the Hurricane, and it's technically at the top, but it also did well in that 6-inch mark. The Squama is pretty much running, running with the bulls, running in the middle of uh, the rest of them at that six inch mark which is where we saw these fans actually performing well so it kind of makes a lot of sense uh, so let's just move on next we're taking a look at noise normalized versus cfm so cubic feet per minute of airflow my control fan has a uh, cfm of 43.7 so that's that's basically basically the line to beat and the da, 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 hurricane produces 41.4, which is still a good result. It's towards the top of the graph, but it's um, not the best. But it's it's a good fan in this type of application. The Squama produced 35.8 uh, CFM, which is still a good result, but it's more middle of the pack. And the other fans are listed on there as well for you to enjoy. Moving things up to 100% PWM, we have the RPMs, the fan name, RPM, and the noise level it produced. So the T30 in this just blew everything else out of the water, so we know that. Let's move on. So focusing in on the Squama, it's sitting here at 67 cubic feet per minute of airflow, which is off from my control. It's not as high as that. And then moving down lower, we have the Hurricane at 59.2. Uh, so the Squama is kind of overall the better of the two, but we have the other data up there for as comparative points. Uh, taking a look at the data from the other another point of view, so this is the noise level across uh, at CFM across. So basically the 
this the noise level across all RPM ranges or um, airflow regions. And the squama is sitting pretty much at the top of its grouse until it it uh, bottom or tops out at its maximum RPM. So it's running fairly well, pretty high end with the rest of the fans. Uh, as for the hurricane, it is also mixed in the middle there, which indicates that it's got a pretty good CFM um, performance across its decibels. It just doesn't have the same sort of high end as the Squama or other fans in in this uh, that I've tested. Now that we have finished taking a look at the fans and my graphs and the data, let's jump on to the open box experience and do fan analysis. Now that we've finished going over the charts and the testing, I want to do the open box experience for the Squama 2503B and the XPG Hurricane. Let's start with the Squama. So the Squama box has this dimple texture. I don't know if it'll show up on camera, but it looks pretty good. The packaging is very nice. It has the specs for the fan here, uh, 2000 RPM, the pressure that it's rated for, the noise that they claim, as well as the CFM airflow in their testing. Mind my testing and their testing is probably not directly comparable uh, because of testing apparatus. Uh, open box. Really with some very nice packaging. It has a little control board. Uh, let's see, these are the RGB headers. They use a custom plug in there that plugs into the fan. So I like that. Uh, I have it plugged in on this one to uh, convert what they're using there into whoops, standard ARGB. And everything else is duplicates. You got some screws, that kind of stuff. Let's uh, take a closer look at the fan. And this is the RGB look of the Squama. 2503B, and this is a very subtle RGB effect. I think it looks absolutely phenomenal. Just that subtle little ring around the outside with the dimpling, I think it looks absolutely fantastic. If you just want a little touch of RGB and not to just be lighting all over my case. Um... I absolutely love the way the purple looks on this. Uh, my personal build is a purple and orange uh, preferred setup in the coloring. And I really like the way that purple looks much better than the way it looks behind. But let's go ahead and turn off the synced lighting so that you can see how the color changes and shifts all over. And that is a very looking, very smooth looking transition. I physically cannot see where any of the RGB lights are in it, which kind of is a testament, not RGB lights, the LED lights. That means that there just must be a lot of them to make it that seamless a transition. So if all you're really after is a very subtle RGB effect, I think that this might be a top choice for you regardless of this fan's performance. From the back, it's the same sort of thing. It's a very subtle lighting. Um, the posts are pretty narrow looking from the back, especially with the RGB uh, LED lights. Um, yeah, overall, I really like the way this appears with its lighting effect. If you're not wanting something over the top. And um, at this stage in my life, I would say I uh, prefer it to be not over the top. So this might be a top contender if I to do decide to do a pure RGB build. Uh, anyways, let's uh, move on to the next section or uh, the next topic. Like we saw in the uh, RGB appearance section, I really like just this little thin ring that's around the outside of the fan, where it's just a very uh, how should I say, subtle effect for the RGB. I think it looks really nice. Um, 
but let's focus in on the actual fan itself and its features and technology used. Geometric Future, the brand that um, produces the Squama series of fans, is going along the theory of golf ball dimples trip the air to turbulent, which helps reduce boundary layers on fans. And so they've got a dimpled surface along the edges, as well as on the leading edge of the fan. There, the back side has dimpling along the back, but the fan blades themselves are very smooth. Um, the appearance of the back is pretty basic, but it's it looks good. Um, the distance between the edge of the fan blade and the edge of the housing is a little bit on the large side, but um, more like an average fan. So given the fan's price, I guess it's acceptable, but they're a little on the expensive side, so I'd like to see it'll get a little bit closer, and that actually would improve the pressure characteristics and performance of these fans. Uh, visually, I do like this sort of square circle. So uh, the inner housing is realistically exactly like any other fan, but because of the way it leads into the edges here, it just actually makes it look like a rounded square, and it uh, visually brings you into the fan very differently. Um, I'm reviewing this a little bit more differently than other fans because it's more of a visual aspect of the fan. Again, the uh, dimpling on the front, it's sort of a hexagonal dimple, uh, is there to trip the air to turbulence so that the air will hug against the blades better. So that's actually why a golf ball flies farther than a smooth ball. A smooth, a smooth version of a golf ball versus the dimpled golf ball, the dimpled golf ball flies farther. Um, whether or not it's actually doing anything on a fan, uh, you, I would need to do very fine-tuned aerodynamic testing, which I just don't have the capability for right now. Um, I don't know what else to say. The fan blade design looks more pressure-optimized, but... Um, not quite a hybrid. Definitely shifted towards uh, pressure, but not super, super duper pressure, if that kind of makes sense. Uh, overall, I think it looks really cool. And um, I don't know. Uh, it does, I uh, almost forgot to say it, have a hodgepodge of cable. So this is your standard cable to plug into your fan header. It's very short. In the box, there is an extension cable. So the fact that it's so short is good for daisy chaining these together so that you can more easily hide it, but also means they have to connect more wires potentially in the end. Um, I guess for future revisions that I would like to see uh, Geometric Future do is a uh, wireless like contact patch uh, connection, a lot like uh, Lee and Lee uses. I think that'd be pretty cool. Uh, this right here is the cable for the RGB header that converts it to the standard header. So one of the di biggest disadvantages of uh, an RGB fan is just doubling your cables, needing, needing a second one. But it has a little secondary header so you can daisy chain again. Um, Yes, that's all. Let's jump to the next one. Next fan. And the second fan in this group is the Hurricane from XPG. Now, this is probably a fan that XGB, XPG licensed, but I can't find it anywhere, so this might actually be their own custom design. But uh, the box contents are very simple. It comes with the fan and some standard screws. On the box, we get details like high static pressure design, the RGB, a long lifespan, and a pretty little PQ graph curve, and some spec information. It's very hard to read, especially even off camera. Um, I selected this fan because I thought it looked very interesting. I liked this double fin design. Uh, like I said, I literally like this double fin design. I thought it looked really interesting. So the theory would be that as 
the fan rotates. So it would rotate in this direction. These channels will guide the air into the secondary top wing, which will uh, increase the amount of air going into it. So in theory, increase the pressure. But based on this frame design, unlike the Squamo we just looked at, which was a squared off design, so actually good at sealing, this is very open. All these sides wide open means that pressure, air pressure can escape all around it. So the fact they're advertising this as a high static pressure fan is very negated by the fact that it's not a squared off housing. Now in a heat sink, so a lot like uh, my air cooler, so heat sink air cooler as opposed to a radiator, that doesn't matter as much. So on a fin stack, this might actually do just fine. Um, in testing, it performed pretty well. Um, nothing overly spectacular, but it was good overall, like, like we saw. So uh, clearly there's something to this design. The really, this is the RGB for the Hurricane ARGB120. It has eight LED RGB lights. You can see that it's a different shade of color than my RAM sticks behind it. <clears throat> and uh, unfortunately, this is just going to be the case for a lot of um, RGB stuff that uh, the colors are not going to be exactly the same between one brand to the other or even between one device to the other. But this has a nice RGB ring around it. It has pretty good diffusion. Uh, on camera, you can actually see where the, the lights are, but in person, it's not quite as noticeable. But the uh, light on the inside where the LEDs individually are is much more noticeable. And as I bring the camera on holding it manually, you can really see the bright spots. So um, take that for what you will. I don't necessarily have an opinion on it. Uh, if you'll notice from my build, I don't really have RGB lights in it. So I'm not strongly opinionated yet, and I'm just trying to be pretty analytical with um, how I'm talking about these fans. Switching the fan over to uh, Unicorn Puke or color changing. Um, it's a pretty smooth transition as the, uh, um, the each of the RGB or not RGB LED lights uh, flicks over. Um, I care most about how well the fan actually performs as a fan, but it looks pretty cool. Um, I'm not sure what else to say about it at this time. This is how the fan looks from the back. It's actually one of the better looking fans from the back because they do incorporate a light ring in the back, unlike many other brands, as well as having the, um, well, the, the light shine through the blades from the back. So it's not as bad looking as some of the other fans, but it definitely looks better from the front. Uh, anyways, uh, I guess that's uh, showing off the RGB. Let's move on to the next section. So we already talked about the RGB built into it, so I'm going to ignore that uh, for the time being. But the uh, blade distance to the gaps on the edges are pretty much average. And well, I just really don't know. I think it's really interesting. I am curious as to how much effect this really w these uh, secondary wings truly have on this blade on this fan blade uh, versus just having these uh, basically flow straighteners because that's what this does is it as the air gets scooped into it it guides it down the back and does it get accelerated because I don't see that getting narrower or does it create a secondary pressure wave it's really hard to know exactly what it's doing without um, basically making a simulation of this which uh, sadly is beyond what I can do with my current, uh, basically hardware and software setup. Um, but I think it's really interesting looking. I think it looks really cool. So if you just wanted to ha have like a showcase crazy fan on the front, this would be definitely the one to do it. Although when it's spinning, 
um, you can't see much, you just get the lines basically. Uh, it does have vibration mat mounts built into it on the sides. Uh, the back of it, pretty basic. The struts are rounded off as opposed to being an angle. And overall looks... Um, the blade thickness, it looks very much more like a pressure optimized one. Mm, slightly towards a hybrid, but definitely more pressure optimized fan blades themselves. They also have a pretty steep curve angle down. So I'm talking about it's arcing down, which helps push the air in. So uh, good static pressure fans are more or less flat. And then if you curve it down, it helps accelerate the air at the end. So it's like they created a pressure optimized fan, but didn't create the pressure optimized housing. So I think this could do a lot better if they did something like that. But I think you, I think you'd be happy with this, especially as a showcase piece. As I mentioned before with the Scrama fan, with RGB comes doubling of your cables. So it comes with, I already got them tangled up. Do, do, do. So you got your standard fan handler, and it's got a, um, that's where you connect the second fan, and it's really far down the line, which means you have to find a way to hide all this cable. And then you have your RGB, it's nice and long, with a short connector, and like that. And you can daisy chain the RGB fans together like this, as well as power them but uh, they'll all be the exact same color because they'll be synced up kind of that way. Um, but yeah, I think that's all I have to say about this fan this time. Let's jump to the next section. Before we jump to the next section, I forgot to mention how they tested in a pull configuration. So this is when I stick it to the back of my CPU cooler and how noisy they were. So the 2503B was just silent. This this performed fantastic in that pull configuration in terms of noise. Uh, so in a pull configuration as a radiator, A+. Plus. On the downside, you're losing all your RGB that you paid all your good money for, but at least it'll run silently. The Hurricane here had a slightly high-pitched noise. Overall, it wasn't terrible, but uh, you can do better but it wouldn't be the end of the world if you ended up using that in a pull configuration. All right, so now this leaves us with the question of um, value proposition for these fans. So first up is the price. Well, the Squama I bought in a triple pack. So uh, figuring out the price of each of the fans, you just take the total price divided by three, and it was $20. The Hurricane, on the other hand, was a $35 fan. And that could potentially hurt its performance in these graphs that we're going to be taking a look at. Because these graphs are, per, are the performance per dollar, not raw performance values. So a very cheap, poor performing fan could rank very high in this graph. So just like a very cheap, good performing fan could perform be excellent on these graphs. So the cheaper the fan, with the better the performance that it had, it's going to top these graphs. It basically ignores the total performance of the fan, which is why I put this at the end of my graphs. So if all you do care about is performance per dollar and you're on a tight budget, this is the basically the graph to focus in on. But if you're looking at top end raw performance, you want to look at the beginning. And if you're trying to find the best kind of middle ground, this is where you start comparing the two. So now that that disclaimer is out of the way, let's focus in on some of the data. On the top, we have my 140 millimeter fans or 180, so the larger fans. At the bottom of the graphs, we have the 120s. And this isn't every single fan I've tested. It's just some of the key, uh, what I consider the key fans to, to really consider to take a look at. So right away, the Squama is sitting towards the high end, almost maybe like 0 0.9, 0 0.9, yeah, around 0 0.9 uh, meters per second of airflow per dollar, which puts it in a good position. So it, it is sitting in towards the top of the pack. Mind, it isn't 
the top end performer, which belongs to the TLG12. Um, looking at the Hurricane, it's kind of sitting pretty far back. It's it's okay value, but it's it's just not as good. Uh, taking a look at if you're running them at 100% PWM, well, both these two fans sort of drop back and are not quite at the as high a value proposition. They're still, particular Skoma is still good, but it's just not excellent. It's good. So some notable notes are like the Thermal Right C12, um, the Silent Wings 4 Pro 140 is actually kind of low. The P12 from Arctic freaks pretty high. The F12 ranked fairly high. Um, all right, let's let's jump to the next graph. So next we're taking a look at the same thing except at the nine inch mark, which is where we start to see more drop off in performance. And uh, we see that the Squama and the Hurricane both kind of have fallen back in terms of their value compared to the previous one, where they're ranked rather highly. Now they're ranked not as well, which brings me back to the point of these fans, I would not buy them as case fans. I would buy them specifically if you're going to put them on a air cooler or a radiator, or you're specifically buying a small form factor case. So you can see where they lie. They're, they're not terrible, but they're not great. So looking at them in CFM per dollar, noise normalized and 100% PWM, we can see that the Squama is the better value of these two fans. But they're both, uh, the Hurricane I would say is about average, the Squama is above average. Neither of them are, or the Squama in particular, not excellent, but it's good uh, value looking at it from this perspective. Going on to the last but not least of these um, value proposition graphs, we have performance per dollar in my CPU cooler. Uh, noise normalized, 100% PWM, same sort of thing. And we see that the Squam and Hurricane and noise normalized are very, fairly close and towards the top, but not at the high end. I call them more or less average performers. And at 100% PWM, they've kind of fallen back quite a bit. So on a CPU cooler, unless you really like their styling, there are kind of better-ish options in the value proposition area. But they were good performance as we saw from the beta. The Squama in particular should be good at locking in the airflow through a radiator system, as opposed to the Hurricane's design that we saw. Anyways, let's move on to the conclusion and uh, wrap up this review. I want to thank you all for checking out my video. Please subscribe for more content. I've got lots more fan videos coming up, as well as a lot of previous fan videos. I've tested a whole bunch of fans. I'm getting ready to do a big roundup comparing all the fans that I've done thus far. Uh, again, please subscribe, check out my videos, and thank you very much. Have a great day. Now that we've finished basically all the review, here is my raw data the XPG Hurricane and the Geometric Futures uh, Squama 2503. If you wish to use this data, you have my permission to do so. However, if you use it in any production value, I request that you use me as reference because I'm the one that generated the data and put in a lot of work, well, to get the data. But anyways, thank you for watching and have a good one.